Cool. So welcome to the 11th meeting of the IPFS DAPS working group. Uh, you can find the meeting notes in the link that I'll drop in the, uh, once again, in the uh, chat. And um, as always, we are trying to do a bit of a status update. We meet like every two weeks. And actually, I thought maybe, Russell, since I've been out for the last week, I saw a lot of really cool stuff getting merged into Helia. Um, so maybe we could sort of touch base on some of those things. Maybe you could share an update if you're up to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's There's been yeah a number of updates over the past week or two. Um, a lot of it is kind of fueled by either Helia HTTP gateway or Helia service worker gateway or, um, the service worker gateway, not Helia service worker gateway. Um, but, um, some of the big, big changes to Helia are, um, IPNS, uh, TTL now in JavaScript. We're now respecting the, um, TTL for IPNS records and um, appropriately um, purging those from from local cache if if it you know if the TTL is expired, um, and then there was some work being done by Alex uh, for the um, bit swap sessions and trustless gateway sessions, which will essentially. When, when you request a CID, it will call the um, delegated routing endpoint, get a list of providers, and then um, like kind of target those providers for for that CID request instead of targeting um, basically all all peers on the network. So it's it should be a little bit uh, more optimized for, um fetching content and and um sub blocks of the DAG or like you know blocks deeper in the DAG uh based on who has that root. So and like it should be much more performant. Alex has been testing that on the Helia HTTP gateway. Um and you know anecdotally um seeing seeing good results with his tests there. Um, the one issue we may run into with that is, um, adding in some additional logic for, uh, falling back. I don't, I don't know if this is in there yet. Uh, like if you request a CID or try to try to get a CID from, you know, a set of providers, and then you're like going deeply into that DAG. Um, it's just going to try the providers that the delegated routing endpoint provided for those original, that that original content. So if people are providing only that root CID and not the, the DAG, um, the full DAG, like the full tree, uh, it we might run into some issues there. But... Um, you know, I think it's it's on it's not released yet in Helia. It's on the next tag. So I think we're we're trying to flesh that out before releasing, but Alex has the most up-to-date information there. Oh, Alex is on. Cool. cool. And I mean, I'm using the I think I added the fetching like getting more like adding more peers to your session to the gateway uh, block broker, but it's not in the bits. Um, the other, the other important thing that, that the sessions adds because we're querying routing for providers of a block before requesting it, we're not hitting the same like five gateways over and over again. We're going to be hitting random, not random. We're going to be hitting a diverse range of, gateways uh, that are publishing provider records, um, which means that we are less susceptible to things getting blocked and um, the you know red screen of doom on a website if Google decides to prevent traffic to one of our pre-configured gateways. 
also the rate limiting, you know, and the and the more peer to peer aspect of it, instead of just using those gateways, you know, it's actually querying a divide, diverse set of providers that should have that content. So should be less resource, less um, intense on the gateways. Dietrich has a question, so I'll do his and then I go on after. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. How are these gateways discovered, selected via the um, HTTP delegated routers? So there's, we use a default one and then you can configure others if you want. So I, I think there's like, there's two chunks here. There is, uh, I don't know if I don't know if we have, they have like standard words for this. Let's call them like recursive gateways or non-recursive gateways, right? So recursive, we'll call like you know dweb.link, where you ask it for some data and then it will go find the data and then it'll return it to you, as opposed to using the gateway API to talk to say um, web3.storage, which will not recursively go and fetch data for you, but it will serve the bytes to you over HTTP. So if you're using a, a non-recursive gate, you can reconfigure the recursive ones. And for the non-recursive ones, you can discover them through the, the routing system. When you say configure and discover, well, the most follow-up question there is, is that something that I need to do in my client application logic or is that really a configuration options? Or is that like, I'm making a request for the service worker gateway that I installed that library hmm. and that's automatically doing all this stuff for me? So yeah, three three separate answers for those three separate ones. Uh, uh, basically, yes, you configure it in your application code. Uh, you can configure it at Helia. In the service worker gateway, you can configure, like for what we're doing there, you can configure the, the default set of gateways. We have one coded in there, but there's a configuration page that we communicate to subdomain service workers um, that will pull from that root global config. So you can set you know, each each user would be able to set their own gateways, their own maybe private gateway, their own local gateway. Um, but then um and their local delegated router. And then, you know, they would be able to, you know, the providers would would um work how we described earlier as well. Maybe, maybe to clarify, can... application doesn't mean the DAP, it means like the Helia consuming thing, right? So like if you publish a website, that's not like your responsibility to do anything about configs here, but you know, yes. and so the service worker gateway deployment is itself sort of an app. And so it made some choices. Yeah. If you wanted to deploy it differently, or you wanted to use the Helia tools differently, then you would configure it there. Got it. So the, the things like the recursive gateway discovery through the delegated nodes. No, no, the recursive ones are like hard coded. Those are like uh, ah, okay. Because gateways that yeah, give you more gateways is hard coded, and those are all in a standard set that you bootstrap to. You can override them, but yeah, but, yeah, they're they're okay. set in there by oh. default. Yeah. So the magic by default. That's really all I wanted to know. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the ones that get auto discovered are the the non recursive ones, right? So that if you know more. Uh, okay. More yeah. more groups like, you know, web three out storage or or, uh, Kubo nodes running the HTTP over the P2P or, um, you know, uh, Boost Filecoin nodes, whatever that are serving trustless gateways, will all get sort of discovered as they add support. Uh, will this uh, language around recursive and non-recursive gateways be formalized and documented, Eddie? Now that you have just made it up. Now that I've just made it up, uh, yeah, probably should. Yeah, if there's better words than recursive and non-recursive, then uh, then then you know uh, now or on some some PR to the docs repo would be a a good place to 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 talk about that. Well, that's been, I think, a little interesting here. I uh, was chatting with with um, Alex about this yesterday. Is I I think the this this work is like pushing on a bunch of like the the fundamentals inside of like the lower layers of like the JS IPFS libraries and the loop P2P libraries as well that haven't like they're they're sort of like being stressed in ways they haven't 
been stressed previously, which is like discovering all kinds of like interesting ways to either fix things or optimize, um, just sort of like a reasonable thing to be doing. And it is something that can be done a little like in parallel with the just using recursive gateways version of the of something like the service worker gateway like these are because the, the evolution is is still to you know do validation validation client side maybe most important but then if we can get the data fetching to move there that's like a big win um because it gets sort of these big service providers like kind of out of the middle out, out of the middle because because running these like basically proxies to the network um is expensive, which is why there aren't so many of the public ones that are out there. Yeah, I, I've I've seen anytime we talk about, um, you know, the IPFS.io gateway and dweb.link and others, like people enjoy them, but then people also always say like, oh, well, that's, you know, a centralized thing. And like this, this sessions that, that, Alex just worked on and got got uh, that's on the latest tag. Um, you know that is a big step towards n not towards making things not centralized anymore. I think it's awesome. So, yeah. I think that's a good uh, leeway to the next topic, which is the service worker gateway. So the service worker gateway, the way I think of it now is it's a bit like IPFS desktop, except because it's distributed through the web, you um, don't really need to install anything. I mean, you're installing a service worker, but that, that's pretty seamless. Um, and, and then, you know, you get the validation and then we're sort of smuggling in direct retrieval through, um, you know, uh, non-recursive uh, uh, gateway that are returned from the delegated routing endpoint. Um, and so uh, we spoke about some of the progress that was made in Helia. Do you want to maybe give, uh, I, I see already there's two, two of the items here. There's a new readme um, in the service worker, which explains some of the work, uh, some of the uh, project goals. Lytle, do you want to say anything to that? Read, read, read me. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, uh, the service worker is, you, you put it very, very, very well in that it's kind of like the web platform, equivalent of IPFS desktop, but without installing a desktop app. Um, so right now we are working on, it, it's like alpha quality in, in that we are still uh, missing some features. And, uh, but uh, the idea is that uh, by having a gateway implementation uh, in service worker, we give, uh, we grow the pie of what it means to be a, a gateway to IPFS uh, on a web platform. Uh, for example, it could be PWA that you installed on your phone and you, you, instead of having IPFS desktop on your Windows, Mac OS, or Linux box, on your phone, you could have this service worker thing. And effectively, um, it does the same thing. It fetches the things, uh, it fetches blocks from the network. Uh, the difference is you only use uh, the web platform as a runtime. Um, and by the, by, by the mechanism that it has to be, uh, fully on the web, the web platform within the web APIs, it ensures our specifications and tests and conformance uh, does what it says, right? Um, so in this, those initial stages, it may not look impressive because uh, the majority of work is happening in uh, upstream in Helia in verified fetch. But once we, and the majority of logic is also like in verified fetch. So, uh, making a service ga worker gateway possible makes uh, those upstream libraries better and uh, in turn makes our uh, specifications and tooling for testing better. Um, my personal like uh, North Star goal is once we have this implemented, effectively 
have the the minimum set of thing uh, of web gateway uh, things implemented in service worker gateway um it opens a possibility of making ipfs companion standalone thing removing the requirement of having a companion ipfs desktop node or kubo node uh, we still have a gap in apis to make that possible uh, but that's mostly around ensuring there's origin isolation between the routes. So it's not like a technical limitation in being able to retrieve data from IPFS. The only limitation that we will have is around hosting websites and apps. Hosting individual assets will be possible with just companion and this, right? Um, as a stopgap, we, we, can, we will like deploy, you can deploy it on your own domain. You can use uh, the like of one from Shipyard or IPFS Foundation, but I feel that's kind of like the most exciting thing. We enable people who are not able to run desktop app because they are in, I don't know, library or in uh, environments where they are not able to install any applications. Uh, the only thing they need will be a browser. Um, and they will not even have to have a browser extension if they have deployed it on their, on their own domain name, right? Um, so uh, I, I think that's the background behind this project. And uh, I know Russell started uh, splitting the productization issue into kind of like milestones and that's work in progress. Um, so if anyone is interested in following that, uh, we will be switching to, to milestones uh, to kind of like reflect more what's the priority uh, you know, first things first, correctness, and, and uh, making sure we implement uh, things uh, that are mostly use, useful. And then before it is production ready, uh, we need to close those like alpha and beta uh, milestones. Um, I, I guess that's the update. I don't know, Russell, if I've missed anything. I know that like the majority of the work that you described and uh, for the verified fetch directly just out of the box uh, benefits service worker gateway because we are consuming both Helia and verified fetch internally, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's one thing, like when we announced the service worker gateway at, um, was it IPFS camp last year? Um, you know, it was <clears throat> kind of a proof of concept showing that that it would work. And we talked about the, some things we wanted to do with that and um we pulled a lot of the code from that and then the helia http gateway that we have into verified fetch um so you know uh the the code for fetching the content is very light in the service worker gateway and helia http gateway um and you know that's intentional and we plan to continue doing that where where we see, you know, any uh, different logic that we need to to um, fetch content. So like the Helio HTTP gateway and service worker gateway, are mostly um, just sending the request URL to verified fetch. Um, one of the one of the cool things with verified fetch too is um, you can pass in basically any URL, you know, it can be an IPFS protocol URL, IPNS protocol URL, or an existing link to some public gateway like HTTPS colon slash slash IPFS.io slash IPFS slash thing. Um, and verified fetch will convert that into uh, what's needed to query the the configured gateways and potentially peers if you pass it like a peer-to-peer -peer Helia instance. So um, yeah, verif I'm very happy with where verified fetch is now. There's been a lot of work there and it's it's extremely useful today for users um, and devs. Yeah, and the next step there will be, um, I'm gonna be working on a blog post um, with some like ready to run examples like code sandbox style yeah one one thing that i'm i am i don't know if we talked about this 
Um, but the, the gateway conformance, uh, you know, right now we're doing some gateway conformance tests on the Helia HTTP gateway. Um, and I'm going to probably here very soon be working on moving that into verified fetch um, so that we can like verified fetch when it's released, we'll be checking that it is conforming to the gateway uh, spec um, gateway conformance tests. Um, so it's going to operate according to to, you know, the defined specs and tests we have written in the gateway conformance library, if you're familiar with that. Very close, Diedrich. I'll, I'll answer that. Oh, I think this is a little bit. So how far are we from being able to put Helia in my browser extension and make data out of there discoverable to the network? Um, so the existing uh, issues that I'm aware of are, th there's like some like background, let's call them like, like browsery things around like long lived tasks. And like, if I want to serve bytes, that means I have some process that's like listening and able to serve that longer term. Um, I'm a regular browser tab that's probably kind of sad because they those things tend to get killed. Um, I don't know if the extension gives you like more more longevity there that that may that may help you. Um, on the more I guess like a little closer to the IPFSC sides of things. The main things that are missing are, um, I guess, default web transport and some other and other implementations would be helpful, although not strictly necessary. Or sorry, web, WebRTC and other implementations would be helpful, although not strictly necessary because you could just do browser to browser. Um, and the advertising systems are the main advertising systems that exist right now are not really built for super short-lived data. Um, so if you were fixing some of the longer term, if you were fixing some of the, you know, how do I keep my extension and serving things longer term, if that got fixed, then you'd have a much easier time with the advertising because either you would advertise into the DHT, which you can do as more of the peers update to web transport, um actually never mind they'd have to wait update to webrtc so that'll take a little that'll take longer um or you could use um ipni and advertise there um but you don't want to advertise into ipni for short-lived data it's not really designed for that at the moment um and yeah and and using the using the amino dht from browsers is uh not going to be a thing until there's webrtc support in more of the network or web or or yeah uh or web transport or at least the puts yeah um web transport i think that we, if you look at the problab.io website i think the percentage is growing such that we're, we're getting like to a much more usable spot if we needed to but um I don't think browsers like making that many connections anyway, even if they're short lived. Uh, so it's kind of like a, a non a non optimal part of doing advertising from from the browser. There's there's the um, web transport bug with with Chromium um, that's that's I believe being worked on. Um, there is like a, a draft doc. Um, talking about how maybe we can implement some fixes. I'm not sure of the status of that, but um, in Firefox, I think Alex, Alex had created a demo page to kind of show different web transport connections. And if you load that demo page in um, Firefox, it actually performs really well with web transport as far as connections. Um, I don't know if we've done any deep testing on like providing content from Firefox, but based on that sort of metrics page, I think it would be, um, uh, you know, I think it would it would work fairly decently. Now, granted, that is, you know, with the caveat that you leave that tab 
active and open. Um, if you change tabs, you know, your browser is going to kill it and things like that. But for the most, for the most part, like people, when people ask about providing content from the browser, you know, we do need to add that caveat, but I think for devs that are asking, they usually know like, oh, it's going to be short lived. Like, I just, I just want to be able to provide content. Like my note is up. It says it has this, I should be able to fetch it from elsewhere. Um, and so I think like that use case is getting closer and closer to be realistic every day. Um, with the, with the Chrome bug fix, um, in Firefox, you know, I imagine it would work a lot better than people expect. And then WebRTC is going to increase, you know, how many peers we can directly retrieve from as well. Um, and then how many peers we can talk to or do pub sub to announce to a set of, you know, applications that are running some IPFS, um, running Helia inside their application and wanting to communicate with each other via pub sub, you know, like, um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's maybe a, another thing, which is like, it's... Um... the options available let's let's call it if if you're not if you're you're like i want to serve data from the browser and want to do this like content routing thing um and you're like well okay i guess maybe not maybe i'll just like run some of my own infrastructure and like i'll i'll like pin there or something and it's like a if you're doing this as like a da like a you know someone who's like making an application um you could do that, but you could also choose to be like, well, if I'm going to have to run my own stuff, I could just run my own, like, I could, I could just operate, you know, a server a set of servers as like the content routing layer while I'm dealing with the rest of this. And then I'll still get sort of, you know, peer to peer transfer, but I'll have like a discovery problem. And maybe the discovery problem is just a bootstrapping one because you're bootstrapping to a list of like pub sub top until like you know peers inside of a pub sub mesh and then you're using that for discovery or something like that um so there's like a bunch of ways this gets easier um i think it would be i think it'd be really useful for um people who are sort of interested in building those applications to like join like the helium working group calls and like chat about what they need there. I think a lot of the the pushes we're seeing seeing lower in the stack here are happening because the service worker gateway is sort of closer to the application user. And so like it's easier to like play with it and see it and then see what needs to get fixed and then push those fixes lower down the stack. Um and so kind of like and and from like the end user in is like a little easier to like make make the most useful changes i think than from the bottom out but speaking of which the firefox as I, I think I, I put down there the firefox beta has web transport support and i think stable is next week that's very exciting don't jinx it don't jinx it Right. Cool, Lido, anything to share on the path affinity? Um, I know you worked uh, a couple of weeks ago on a, a an initial implementation, a really naive one for Boxo, was it, or for Rainbow? Yeah, I, I think it, it's parked. We, we kind of like switched priorities a little bit, uh, but um, we still want to do it. I think we may improve it beyond this POC. Uh, I had no time to work on it, but uh, I feel we will pass, at least in Go, we have ability to pass uh, uh, this affinity with context. Uh, so even though uh, we are not using that inside of things like GitHub, uh, GitHub sessions, uh, we, we could uh, pass it just like we pass uh, DNS link or subdomain gateway context in Boxo Gateway Library. Um, I think that's uh, that's about it. I feel, yeah, we will likely, it, the, J, uh, the JS site and, and, the, and the Go site are uh, independent effectively. 
we can start sending that from uh, Helia verified fetch, uh, but the backend will not do anything about it until we wire it up and ship it in uh, Rainbow. So likely we'll have it in Rainbow first, and then there will be like an incentive um, to do that in JS because it will uh, improve things uh, around edge cases. Cool. One thing um, unrelated um, is uh, just a shout out to uh, Adeline. Uh, and I mean, for anyone watching this or who isn't a part of Shipyard, um, we just published a blog post about uh, IP Shipyard, the team that many of us from this circle are on. So you can find the link in the notes if you're interested to hear about how we're working and how you can engage with us and the role that we want to play in the community. Um, anything you want to add there, um, Adi? Um, not really, other than like, uh, I guess maybe as I, I previously alluded to, uh, it's much easier to make impactful changes with input from the community on like what they're currently building and needing and trying to work around and all that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so like if, if that's where you're at, uh, come say hi and and uh, let's chat. There are, are links there are links there. Um, it also helps them figure out like you know to you know prioritize like where where we're moving uh, where we're moving our efforts to uh, help sort of the the public goods of of you know IPFS and lib P2P. Uh, get better. Cool. So check that out. That's on the IPFS blog. Um, I thought, Salif, since you're uh, joining, at least in as far as I'm aware, uh, the first time this working group, uh, just wanted to give you like a minute. Maybe you can share what you're working on and what, what brought you here. And if you want, we can also stop the record button if you, you don't want to have that on record. No, that's cool. <laughs> um... Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's nice to meet you. Um, I just popped in. Yeah, I've been kind of like um, scouring the Helia GitHub for a minute and trying to find some time to kind of like run up some of the example scripts. Um, yeah, but I'm working on a project right now called River, um, which if any of you guys are familiar with Arena, it's quite similar to Arena, um, except all the data is like content addressed. Um, and we use uh, Web3 storage to cut all our deals. Um, but yeah, like I'm trying to just kind of bet get a better understanding of um, how we can kind of get closer to the IPFS ecosystem and understand just like different ways we can continue to like serve data um, and like serve the app over IPFS potentially at some point. Um, let me share the, the link with you guys. Well, actually, whoever is um, hosting the screen share, the link is river.ph. All right, that's it. So that was Arena, not the that's project Arena. you're working on. Yeah. No, that's not the yeah. project. Okay. Yet, but yeah, yeah, this is the project that we're working on. Oh, it looks cool with this widescreen. Um, but yeah, so like if you click on one of the channels or icons, the routing that we use um is all like CID based. Okay. And you see the buffy. Yeah. So trying to figure out a way. Um, right now, because like all the items we're using, all the items we're pinning, um, but we haven't figured out the part, which is like wrapping everything in a DAG and like, or in a car file rather, and then like posting that. And yeah, there's just like, like a lot of concepts related to IPFS that I'm super not familiar with. So just trying to get wiser. Cool. This looks really cool. Um, be sure to like join in, you know, there's, uh, the Slack, there's the forum, um, 
uh, we'd love to like be in touch. And I think it, also it's all bridged to Discord. So if you're a Discord kind of person, um, there's also an IPJS uh, channel, which is really focused on the JS stack and we try to hang out there. So just some pointers for you in case you are uh, trying to navigate your way. Cool, I appreciate that. Cool, with that, unless uh, anyone else uh, has anything they want to bring up, I think we can come to uh, a closing here. Yeah, maybe one I thing I'll, one I'll, 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 oh, go after ahead. After you, Dean. Oh, I was going to say, I, 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 no, I was just talking a little. So like one thing that's, that's maybe, um, would be interesting in an application like this to, to sort of see, see where the edges are is, um, from what I can tell, it's like you're fetching the, like the, the data is being fetched directly from uh, post process, let's call it from web three out storage. Mm -hmm. Right. It's so like, what are the, what are the edges or require are things that would have to happen for to have tools either like, like companion or um, like sort of the validation from like the Helia verified fetch work such that you could still say, I want to try web three out storage. Cause like they're the reliable people I'm paying to store the data, mm -hmm. but then sort of optimistically have also be able to like check, Oh, is the data, is the data local already is, you know, if they're having an, if there's some like outage at the storage provider, does somebody else have it, um, without like the cost of added round trips. Yeah, that would be super cool to explore. Um, yeah, is there, is there like, I'm trying to understand how Helio works. Like, is there a way that we can have an instance of an IPFS node, like being served alongside the app? And then instead of like pulling from the web three storage gateway, we can just be pulling from that node. Yeah. So like, for example, you could straight up with like the verified fetch example that got linked in the notes here, and maybe we should just like link it again and, uh, and in, sorry, in, from chat to the notes, uh, you could like configure the uh, sort of a verified fetch retriever backed by the web three dot storage gateway, right? And then that would say, okay, actually, I'm gonna just I'm gonna validate the blocks on my end. I'm gonna validate the data on my end by CID, but I'm gonna like fetch all the data from you, mm -hmm. right? And that's sort of like you've done validation on your end and then you could say, okay, I actually want to do fetching from like multiple parties. Like maybe if web three out storage doesn't have it in a little bit. I should also check like dweb.link, which will on my behalf go and find a whole lot of other people who might have it. Um, and then later you can move to say, actually, okay, I don't actually need, I'll try web three out storage. And if that doesn't work, I'll try the peer to peer network directly instead of going through some like proxy because the proxy both like can, you know, sometimes it, it speeds things up because it has caching, but sometimes it slows things down because it's just an extra hop mm -hmm. in the middle. Right. Um, and I think that's kind of like the, the way you push that, but ideally it should be really easy to start with just the first part of it, which is you fetch the data from who you need and you validate on your side. Okay, cool. Um, uh, Lytle, do you have any thoughts? I, I forget how some of this will end up, how nicely some of this will play with like, uh, with IPFS companion as, or, or what are maybe some of the, the areas that we'd have to look forward to here. Um, uh, you mean for handling IPFS resources or. Yeah. Yeah. For uh, handling like. Right now, right, because like the the most common pattern is use a public gateway or a or a local gateway that you're running yourself, and then companion handles all sort of the redirects to send them where you want to go. Um, as we start like shoving more stuff into into code, um, where where companion will need to change in order to be able to like kind of help out more than it is right now. Yeah, so there's like a like a progression path. Uh, and we can do 
things uh, or really improve user uh, experience along the way. So it's, um, let's say like the end goal is to have a IPFS protocol handler being handled by the browser extension and kind of like IPFS node being there, you have a single like node, uh, you got the duplication of nodes or at least like the data store across websites or things like that. Uh, but that depends on some uh, missing APIs, uh, which I linked um, in the chat. But in the meantime, uh, something like verified fetch could learn if user has IPFS companion setup. In companion, user has a preference for maybe they have local node running, and they have information about the local gateway there. Maybe they prefer to use a specific public gateway that they trust, right? Um, maybe they prefer a specific uh, or additional delegated uh, routing endpoints um, to be used. So those things could be set up in companion in one place. And then all websites that use verified fetch uh, could look if there's a hint from the browser, from the user agent, and add that to the list uh, of, let's say, gateways or routing endpoints. Same things applies to like DOH endpoints used for DNS link resolution. There's no like web API for resolving TXT records, but uh, there are DOH endpoints that anyone can use in their web app. So I feel like for even before we have the, the APIs that close the gap, there's like a lot of UX that tool like companion could uh, like improve, right? That way you 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 say just install companion, set your preferences there, and that way um, you have a you don't have to adjust your IPFS settings for every uh, DAP that uses. So that's just like an example. I think, um, yeah. Um, in between now and then, we still could improve UX because um, uh, we. Otherwise, it's like a, the DAP uh, creator makes all the decisions. We, we, what's the what's the routing? What, which gateways are used? But then um, there's like a, a gap in user agency, and I feel like Compile could help with that, and also like make it more robust in that. Uh, Maybe the, the all the backends are down, but if you have companion, you can revive an app without changing it, its code. Uh, and that's like very, very like high level things. I yeah. Uh, right now, uh, like verify fetch requires manual configuration, uh, but we may add some signaling between companion and verify fetch. We don't want it to be too expensive. We don't want to inject things on websites, so something to figure out. All right, Dietrich, I think I, I, I hijacked you by in, uh, injecting Lytle uh, under under my response. So so where, well, <laughs> I feel like you had a question. Yeah, I uh, just had a question of like, what, what's the best place? Is there like a, um, like a good uh, example for, Hackathons, like a landing page that shows a bunch of Helium examples, uh, or like a a good DAP example that has like a MetaMask login and uses local Helia or Service Worker already built in, like all in one shot anywhere. I'm mentoring at the uh, the uh, ETH Dam Hackathon this weekend. Refresh my Helia. Stops. And everything is different now. So much better. Great. I shared an example that uses Helia and it uses also Wallet Connect. Um, awesome. It doesn't do any like Ethereum stuff except for signing user messages and generating cards, but it covers a lot of the patterns around working with car files. Um, Perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. Cool. I think that's a good moment uh, to end on. Salif, I'll probably be getting in touch with you. Um, 
it's really cool to see Reva is open source too. So I'm looking forward to like hearing also more about what what are some of the problems you're having and like what are like the things that you would be needing. But anyways, we can take that um, offline. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, there's no River Hangout spot um, besides River itself. And if if anyone is interested in trying it out, um, please send me an email. All right, cool. Well, see you again in two weeks. Later, y'all.